Today we're talking to Len Berman, Daniel Patrick Moynihan Professor of Public Affairs at the Maxwell School at Syracuse University. Well, it's become almost cliche to say that our federal policies are unsustainable. What it means is that we can't keep on spending more money than we take in forever. The big problem is that if we continue our current policies uh, for too long, we'll have accumulated so much debt that we'll basically be bankrupt as a nation. At that point, interest rates could explode, uh, and that would cause businesses that have a hard time borrowing to make new investments. It would, it would hurt homeowners and people who want to buy cars. Uh, the economy would uh, be ground to a halt. Uh, government, unable to continue borrowing, would have to raise taxes and cut spending to the bone. And it's basically the worst nightmare scenario, no matter what your politics are, because we would have taxes so high that it would make a Scandinavian blush, and spending that you know, couldn't even support a, even a minimal social safety net or other priorities like a robust defense, good roads, and everything else. This is, this is the kind of thing that keeps budget analysts awake at night, because it's really just an unspeakably horrible scenario. It's really hard to tell exactly when it happens. You know, it, some people think the crisis is imminent and that any day interest rates are going to start increasing. I think if that happened, actually, that would be the best thing because if interest rates started to go up, there would be pressure on policymakers to cut back on spending and increase taxes to get the budget under control. My concern is that uh, that interest rates could stay long, could stay low for a long time. And there are a couple of reasons. One is that interest rates are set in financial markets, and we have a lot of evidence that people in financial markets actually are just not very bright. And the second thing is that uh, a lot of our money comes from overseas. The Chinese, Koreans, uh, Saudis lend us money so that we have cash to use to buy their stuff. It keeps their economies afloat. And if they pulled the plug on their lending to us, uh, it would hurt their economies in the short term, and I, it gives them an incentive to keep on sending us money, basically keep on propping up our economy and, until the point at which it's it, 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 until the point at which we can't make payments anymore, and that's really very frightening. That could take 10 or 20 years to happen, and if it does, if it happens at a point at which our debt is two or three times the size of our economy. Uh, that would be very, very bad news. We would basically be in the same situation as Argentina or the Weimar Republic or other famously failed countries. So the, the CBO puts out a volume every couple of years called Long-Term Budget Outlook. And it's the most frightening document that, that comes out of the government anywhere, may, maybe with, with the exception of some things about terrorism. Uh, I mean, what it shows is, is uh, this, this chart showing debt as a share of GDP just exploding over the next 30 or 40 years. The thing is, as bad as that chart is, as bad as those projections are, they're wildly over-optimistic because they assume that our economy is going to continue to grow and they assume that interest rates will stay at the same low level they've been for the last 20 or 30 years. And that certainly won't be true forever. Uh, it might be true for the next 10 or 20 years, but at some point the bubble is going to burst. And this time the bubble is for U.S. government securities. And when that bubble bursts, there's not going to be anything the government can do about it. You know, the way we got out of, hopefully, the way we get out of the current crisis is the government borrowed enormous amounts of money to uh, prop up the U.S. economy. But if a crisis is caused because the U.S. government has borrowed too much, additional borrowing isn't going to be a solution. And that's the point at which the catastrophe occurs. The best scenario is that Eventually, policymakers acknowledge reality and they start raising taxes and they cut spending to get our budget close to balance. It's definitely not a good idea to cut spending and raise taxes during a recession, but hopefully we won't be in a recession for much longer. And at that point, we really need to have a plan to get the economy back on track. Otherwise, the next crisis is going to be much bigger than the current one. In fact, I actually have a proposal that would help with our long-term budget problems and would provide a fiscal stimulus in the short term. I proposed a value-added tax. It's a kind of national sales tax that was dedicated to paying for health care. And the VAT 
the VAT would, would take effect starting in 2010, and it would increase in steps over the next year or two. The reason that could be a boost to the economy right now is that if you knew that, say, starting in 2010, there was going to be a 10% tax added on to everything you bought, you'd have an incentive to buy things right now. And if you knew the rate was going to increase again in 2011, it would give you an incentive to buy things in 2010 and so on. So it could provide a fiscal boost in the short term. If we had a tax dedicated to paying for health care, uh, the long-term fiscal imbalance would basically go away. And furthermore, an advantage of a value-added tax is that it encourages savings, since that's not subject to tax. And even though we want to encourage more spending right now, when the economy gets going, saving is going to be a very high priority. The best case scenario is it takes really great leadership. President Obama is really smart. He's very articulate. He obviously cares about this. If he's willing to spend his political capital on getting the budget under control, he might be capable of leading the country along and saying, you know, Republicans and Democrats alike care about their grandchildren, and our current policies are stealing from them. They're immoral. That might work. The other possibility is we have a crisis, and politicians respond to that. Uh, I'm hoping that we get out of this through leadership and foresight and not through crisis because by the time the crisis comes it might be too late.